Good day, brothers and sisters. Welcome again to Shepherds for Christ. My name is James, and I'm going to share with you a very powerful testimony or devotion that I had this morning. Um, and the title is Directions for Growth While Trusting in the Lord. And the key, the key, sorry, the key scripture will be 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, chapter 5, as well as Psalms 37 and Psalms 132. I pray that it will be a blessing for you as much as it is for me. And uh, may we continue to grow thereby as we study God's word. Let us open with a word of prayer. Thank you to Heavenly Father in Heaven for this opportunity once again to pray to you, O Lord, the infinite God. And I pray that your spirit may rest upon us. I pray that you will empty me of me and that you will empty uh, those that are watching and those that are studying this, that you'll empty them of themselves and that your spirit will flow through them and give them understanding through your understanding of your word in the very literal of senses. And also, Lord, if there's any, any figurative understanding that you will reveal it to us, Lord, and that your will may be done. Lord, we love you, we thank you. In the name of Jesus and all glory to the Father. Amen. Okay, so, key text, starting in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. All right. I'm reading the King James Version Bible. <clears throat> uh, I encourage you to get a King James Version Bible, as they are the most accurate, according to historical evidence, and um, as well as the state of the language. But uh, I'm sure the Lord will bless you even if you have a different translation. So let us begin. So, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Furthermore then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as ye have received us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. So Paul is emphasizing how important it is for us to be in the Lord and to exhort and to um, walk and to please the Lord and to please God and how we will abound, get better and become more and more closer to His glory, more like His Son, Jesus Christ. Chapter 2, or verse 2. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, once again, exercising the will of God, not our own will. Even your sanctification he is sanctifying us, preparing us, that ye should abstain from fornication, all forms of fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. As we study God's word and as we start to, he reveals the truths of who he is and how he functions, um, he pulls us into that sanctification process and he gives us the tools and the knowledge and the wisdom from him to know how to do that. We cannot do it in of ourselves. He gives us that ability. Verse 5, not in the lust of concup concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Those that do not know God will not try to do such things. Verse 6, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. So he's being specific here. Be because that the Lord, sorry, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. And we also have forewarned you and testified. This is the work of God's people to warn others and to testify of his goodness and of his truth. Verse 7, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. You see, if a person despises what it is that we have to say, or what it is that the Lord will have us to do, he doesn't despise us, he actually despises God. That is what it is saying here, literally. Verse 9, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Indeed we should. Verse 10. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. This is obviously when he was in Macedonia. Thessalonica 
was a town in massive city actually in Macedonia and uh, if I'm not mistaken I think there might be it still exists although it might be under a different name I can't think of it right now um, verse 10 I'm sorry and as we go in verse 10 but we beseech you brethren that you increase more and more obviously increase more and more in the goodness of God and to exercise his will verse 11 and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you so just like Paul was a tent maker and he used to make tents and sell them to do things with his own hands and to be a productive man um, so the Lord admonishes us to do the same thing he has us in our places for a reason but if you want to do something more with your hands I encourage you to do so and to follow the Lord's instruction as to what he will have you do with the gifts that he has given you okay um, verse 12 that you walk honestly toward them that are without so walk honestly towards those that don't have much and that ye may have lack of nothing. Freely give, freely receive. Okay? That is selfless love. Verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that which, sorry, concerning them which are asleep. Not necessarily physically asleep, but asleep spiritually. Okay? That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope there are people in this world unfortunately that have no hope because they are willfully ignorant they do not want their eyes to be opened and to understand how god works but they work in their own vain glory but we should still pray for them and love them nonetheless verse verse 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them which also sleep in jesus will god bring with him so we are asleep in christ knowing that he is restoring us and he is bringing us into all these things and there are those that are still asleep yet they have a heart for god and he's trying to wake them up from their spiritual slumber verse 15 for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we that we which are alive and remain unto the com coming of the lord shall not prevent them which are asleep we will not stop them from doing them for doing what the lord will have to do in their lives verse 16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now he's talking about when he comes, his second coming, and those that be dead and are sleeping in the ground, because there is no hell and there is no heaven to where people die, as we have been told. It says that we are sleeping in the ground. Ecclesiastes says it, the story of Lazarus says it, any other philosophy or any other belief is of pagan origin. If you look hard enough, you will know that. Okay? So it will rise first. No point in us being up there and then suddenly we have to go back to the grave and come up again. That makes no sense. Okay? And we will cover a, um, a devotional session on that topic very soon. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air so shall we ever be with the lord this is not a rapture this is about the second coming revelation is very clear on that subject wherefore comfort one another with these words and it is comforting to know that people are not burning in hell because that doesn't define a loving god and that people are in heaven when others have to suffer down yeah that is also not a loving god but that people are resting and asleep that's why he's the, Jesus said when he was going to resurrect Lazarus, he said, Lazarus is asleep. And he's like, oh, okay, then we can, paraphrasing here, but then we can go wake him up. Then he plainly said to them, no, Lazarus is dead. So he's clearly referring to death as sleep. There can be no debate there. Okay, otherwise you would be debating with God. And I wish that we do not do that. Because that would be very grievous to do that. Okay, from chapter 5 going on. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. But check here, verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction and sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. 
We are living in the time of the end, and there is going to come a great destructive time in this world's history before the Lord seals his people before probation or the door is shut for God's mercies. Just like it was with Noah and the doors were shut of the ark, so it will happen here with us. And if you study the prophecies of God's word, you will come to these understandings. The Lord will teach you. Trust him. He will. All right. But ye, brethren, those that serve the Lord, are not in darkness, that the day should overcome you as a thief. We will know the signs. God will reveal it to us. He will know the signs through his prophecy and through his word. And he will give us clear understanding of when his time will be and when he will come. We might not know the exact hour, but I'm sure he will even reveal to us the day when the time comes. You're all the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep, spiritually that is, as do others. But let us watch, let us watch and be sober with diligent study of God's word, with diligent prayer, with admonishing one another and lifting each other up in the bonds of brotherhood and love, which is perfectness, as the Lord explains. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. He's giving obviously an example of a literal experience, but also in relation to the things that are done in darkness, the darkness of sins of this world. And those that do not study the scriptures, they are in darkness, spiritual darkness. Verse 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation, having the breastplate of faith, Allowing our heart to be protected, knowing that we are of the faith of God and that he is giving us more faith and exercising that faith through us. And also the helmet, which protects the knowledge, knowing that we are saved, that we have been made righteous by the blood of Christ. Verse 9, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He has not appointed us to die according to his wrath that will be poured out without mixture, as it says in Revelation at the time of the end which is the final judgment upon all man. And, um, but, but he has appointed us to obtain salvation by his son, Jesus Christ. True salvation. Not a wishy-washy salvation. Not a little tidbit tad that makes us feel good. No, it is a wholesome spiritual relationship experience with God. Not to follow after the vain religions of this world, but to follow Christ in his teachings and through his spirit of teaching. Amen. Amen. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So now he's talking about whether we are awake or asleep, literally or spiritually. Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as also even as also ye do. So he's instructing us and continuing to do so. Instruction for holy living is the following. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are up, sorry, and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. For God has prepared a people that is already given experience to, to help bring people out of their spiritual darkness. And God has prepared a people and you will know them by their fruits, meaning you will know them by the character they possess and the love of Christ that they possess in their hearts and out of their mouths. You will know the difference. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves, giving us clear instruction on how to deal with these people and how to treat them. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, warn them, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Brothers and sisters, I have a very hard time right now and I pray that you will pray for me. I'm having this hard time with my current landlord who is not in, a good, not in a good stead. In fact, he went so far as to even say F the Bible today. So we pray for him. We bless him in the name of Jesus. And I'm just giving you the understanding that, oh, it's been difficult. The Lord has given me patience. I bear testimony to you guys today. He's given me the patience and the necessary boldness to warn him of his unruly behavior. And it was difficult. But the Lord gave me the words and the patience to deal with it. Verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Don't fight when people fight with you, but ask the Lord for wisdom and ask him for the right word to convict that person 
in loving rebuke. But ever follow that which is good. Follow the things that God has made good in your life. Both among yourselves and to all men. That's why Christ said, if someone slaps you on the one side, let them slap the other side. Because it will fall on them, on their conscience, on their conscience, and the guilt will fall on them. They will have to repent. And the conclusion, as we come to the conclusion, it says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Even in these tough times, praise you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you do. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me, all of us. Quench not the spirit. Do not try to silence God's spirit in our lives. Despise not prophesying. When the Lord is trying to prophesy to you through someone, do not despise it. Listen carefully. And you'll know if it is of a spirit of truth or error. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Anything that is evil of this world, abstain from it. Completely do not give into it. Do not be a part of it. Even if your friends invite you to be a part of it, even if your family, you say, unfortunately, I cannot do it. I do not put evil before mine eyes. For I serve the Lord, a righteous God, and he has brought me into righteousness and to a holy standard of living. If they mock you, praise the Lord. Verse 23, and the very God of our peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit. Sorry, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blameless, without spot. And the more you grow in this, yes, and it's not impossible. We will be seen as perfect, sinless. We are coming to a state where we are sinless. Because Christ's righteousness has fallen upon us. And the scripture says, those who do righteousness are righteous. The word says that. Okay. And be blameless unto them. Verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. So God is calling you and he will do it through you. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. A holy kiss is a representation as it is translated from the Hebrew to wash someone's feet, to show them true love and selflessness. That to wash someone's feet is a beautiful experience. And he, God admonishes us to do that as much as possible, to show that true love and respect and to wash a person's feet of their hard toiling every day. And also as a massage therapist, I can tell you that the the that the 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 detoxification that comes with the feet to wash it takes away a lot of all the toxins coming through the feet and also the massaging of a person's feet or touching their feet has a holistic effect on that person's experience both mentally physically emotionally and spiritually okay i charge you by the lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren all as i am sharing with you today the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you. Amen. Amen, meaning all men agree. Okay. So, that is Thessalonians 4 and 5. I pray that this has been an encouragement for you already. Okay. Give me one moment. Just put in the... You've got to put the laptop on so that it doesn't turn the screen off. Okay. And we are now going to go into Psalms 37 and Psalms 132, going from verse or from Psalm 37 first. Okay, Psalms 37. Rest in the Lord, it says. Trust in Him, in him always. And this is a nice lengthy one and will give us the exact encouragement and instruction on how to do such. It says, yeah. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut off, or cut down, sorry, like the grass, and wither, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. 
Brothers and sisters, I cannot tell you how many times this has come through in my life. And I hold these promises. This is a lot of promises to us. And he will be faithful to answer them. Verse 6, And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Trust in him. Rest in him. And, be, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of, of him who, who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Don't, don't worry about people that are, that are doing things in a worldly, wicked way, and if they are prospering. Well, the Lord is going to tell us exactly what's going to happen to them. Cease from anger. Don't get angry. And forsake wrath. Don't give in to that anger and to retaliate. But fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Do not do any evil toward anyone. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of his peace. Amen. Amen. I love that. Verse 12, the wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon them with his teeth. This is how it is. The more that you try to be, uh, the more that you try to seek God and try to be in him and allow him to be in you, he will give you the peace and people will go against your just works. They will. They will look to take your flesh out. They will look to ridicule you and rebuke you and swear at you, just like I got today. But it, it matters not, for the Lord knows their works. The Lord shall laugh at the Tizah. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. That doesn't necessarily only mean the literal poor and needy, but also the spiritual poor and needy. And to slay such as be of upright conversation. I can testify the more I grow in upright conversation through the Lord's power, the more I am rebuked ah, and completely hurt by people and what they have to say. And the Lord says we should turn away from such people. So the Lord, I ask that you guys will continue to pray for me once again and that you will be able to support this ministry. Um, for the Lord, I believe the Lord is calling me to be on the road and to share the gospel with the people that truly want to hear it. And we are saving up monies to buy a camper van. We need about $160,000 or about equal to about 1,600,000 rand to get this camper van. So I pray that you will support us in some way and that you will continue to let the Lord use you and your tithes to support the ministry. All right. Verse, 30, verse, sorry, verse 16. Verse 15. Their sword shall enter into thine own, their, into their own heart, and their bow, bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. And brothers and sisters, I can't express how important that, that piece of scripture is. I do not care for this world. I don't care about the things of this world. I do not care about what I have. I'm literally going to be selling everything I have just to live in a camper van, just so that I can actually do God's work. That's all I care about. It's all I care about. I have died in Christ so that he may live through me. I'll read it again. A little, that a, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. 17. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be at the, as the fat of the lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth, and payeth not again. But the righteous showeth mercy, and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall. He shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. The Lord will pick us up. That's why it says, for a righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. This is, quote, this is emphasizing that same point. Verse 25, I have been young, and now am old, 
yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell for evermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved for ever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein for ever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his, of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, who is Christ. And behold the upright, and Christ works through us. For the end of that man is peace. The Lord will give us peace. He has promised us peace when he returns. And he's coming he's soon, my brothers and sisters. He's coming he's very soon. Sooner than we realize. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the righteous, but the salvation, sorry, of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in thy, in the time of trouble. And we are in a time of trouble. We have entered into the great time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust him. I trust in the Lord and I pray that you will trust the Lord. Let's go to Psalms 132. This is a beautiful psalm as well. And it also is admonishing us to trust in the Lord just as David did. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swear unto the Lord. How he swear unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to mine eyes or slumber to mine eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, we heard of it at Ephratah. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord. Into thy rest, thou, and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. Praise God! Praise God! For thy servant David's sake, turn away, turn not away the face of thine anointed. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, that I shall teach them, that he shall teach us, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He has chosen who he will have in his new Jerusalem, his Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her, I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I will obtain, I will, oh, sorry, I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed, a light unto our feet, and a lamp unto our path. His enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. Praise the Lord for these scriptures. Praise the Lord for this devotion. I'm so thankful that he could share this with me so that I could share it with you. But I encourage you, please, not to listen to me because I am nothing. The Lord is everything. Pick up your word. Pick it up and ask the Lord. Repent unto him and say, Lord, help me to understand your word because only he can. No man can educate you in this. Only the Lord can work through those people if they are indeed surrendered unto him, and you will know them by their fruits. So, I encourage you to be a part of the brethren. I encourage you to be a part of his fruits and to study his word diligently. 
and allow him to lead you to all truth. I thank you. And I want to pray for you once again. I thank you to Heavenly Father in Heaven for this opportunity. Pray for my brothers and sisters around the world, whoever might be watching this, that they will be encouraged by this, that they will know that you are for them and not against them, and that you seek to redeem them. If indeed that they repent of all their ways, all their ways, however deep or shallow it might be, that you will just reveal to them your truth, bring them into glory under your Son, Jesus Christ. May your saving grace be upon them. May the faith that you have given unto every man be grown in you, and may they seek you every moment of every day. May we begin our day with you and end our day with you and go through the day in you. Lord, your will be done. Your way be made clear. And with your word, do we give praise back to you, O Father, and to your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Love to you, and God bless my brothers and sisters.